chapter number 35. Genesis chapter number 35. I know you're already on 8 o'clock. Amen. And so I'm going to try to give the word of God. Amen. And the same spirit of God that he spoke to my heart. Amen. And see what he'll do. Amen. This evening and encourage us and challenge us in his word. Amen. Glad for everybody that's here tonight. Genesis chapter number 35. Genesis 35. I'm going to read verse number 1. We'll be referencing much of it. But I'm going to just start at that, that Genesis 35 1. The Bible says, And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeareth unto you uh, unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Can I read that again just so our minds can absorb everything? And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from thy, the face of Esau thy brother. Amen. I, I want to look at, I believe that right here tonight when we look at Jacob, Jacob is an example to us about a call to revival. Amen. Jacob really right here is experiencing revival. We'll look at his life. We'll look at where he has been. Amen. Particularly in the past couple chapters. Maybe even, we'll, we'll even look further back. Amen. But particularly in the past couple. And we're going to look at where God wants him to go and, and, and what God is, is doing in his life. Amen. So Jacob was in a need for revival. He needed revival. He was settled actually in a very evil place. If you look at Genesis uh, 33 previously, uh, the word of God says in verse number 18, And Jacob came to a, a, a Shalem, a city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan. And when he came from Pandanaram and pitched his tent before the city. So he's placing himself, and, and if you study out what's happening here, I'm not going to go into it for the sake of time, but if you study out what's happening here, he's placing himself in a very bad position. You ever know sometimes folks just place themselves in a bad position? You you wish, and, and you, 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 that you can tell them, and maybe you even can tell them, but they themselves get to a place where they place themselves in a bad position because it's what they want even though they can't see all the dangers that are around. And so the result of this is that uh, his daughter uh, became morally defiled by her brothers because of this. If you read verse uh, chapter number uh, 34, really verse number uh, 1 and 2 and, and, and going on down through there the Bible says and, and Diane, uh, uh, Dinah, the daughter of Leah, uh, uh, which she bare to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And, and when Shechem, the son of Hamar, the Havite prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. Here he's made some bad choices. It's defiled his daughters. You find later on that two of his sons, amen, are doing some very wicked deeds. As you look down to verse number 13, amen, and on you can read about his sons, amen. And sin begat sin. He's in a bad place. A very bad place. He needs a revival. He needs God to revive him, to renew him. Amen. God help us tonight. Amen. God gives us a call for revival. Let me just say this. I'm thankful for early intervention. I'm thankful for CPR. I'm thankful for AEDs. Amen. I know that they save lives. But let me just say this. If you talk to anyone that's an EMT, they will tell you that the best care you can, you can give yourself is not being revived, amen, but making sure you don't get to that point where you need to be revived. Amen. People get an unhealthy lifestyles, unhealthy uh, habits. It takes them to a place where, uh, fortunately, if they're at a place where the grace of God and, and, and early intervention is there, they can be saved. But more often than not, not always is everybody saved from CPR and AEDs. It's better just to stay healthy. But here's Jacob. He did not stay in a healthy place. He did not stay in a good place. And so he needed a revival. 
Amen. And God is calling him to a place of being revived. And so in Genesis 35, 1, the Bible says, once again, and God said unto Jacob, Arise and go up to Bethel and dwell there and make there an altar unto the Lord that appeareth unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau, thy brother. I want to look at some, some, some steps as we get to just a reviving and a renewing of the, the, the presence of God, the Holy Ghost. The very first thing that I see is that there is a precept in revival. Amen. He says, arise and go up to Bethel and dwell there. Amen. Revival, amen, has two very important ingredients in it. Number one, it is submission to revival. The precept to revival is number one, a submission to revival. Amen. That, that, that the call of God, amen, when he calls us, amen, go up to Bethel, amen, that there is a submission that we must go. Amen. As God calls us, Amen. We've got to go. Amen. Being submissive to the voice. Being submissive to the Spirit. Being submissive to the Word of God. I, I look and I think one of the greatest revivings as the Holy Ghost fell and, and gave a revival to a church that, 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 that they were lost without Jesus Christ. But they, Jesus said, go and tear ye in the upper room. And God sent the Holy Ghost. Amen. Down in the upper room. They were submissive to what Jesus it said, go and tarry, seek, amen, wait. And as they went to the upper room, they were submissive and God poured out His Spirit upon them. If we're going to see revival, if we're going to see a renewing, amen, of God working and moving in lives, we're going to have to be submissive to the call of God. Amen. Submissive <laughs> to revival. And then the Scriptures in revival... Amen. Not only did God say, go to Bethel, amen, arise and go up to Bethel, but He said, and dwell there. Amen. He, when God said to do it, amen, He was submissive. Jacob went and did what God wanted. Do you know what real revival is? When we get in the Word of God and we do what God's Word says. Amen. This morning in Sunday school, Brother David said, some people say, and I believe. Amen. It's tired of stopping, stopping believing what everyone else says and thinks. Amen. Well, there's lots of opinions. Amen. There's lots of folks that have lots of theories. But what does the Word of God have to say on it? What does the Scriptures say? Breaking the Word of God. Amen. And being submissive to the Scriptures of God's Word. Amen. Many people have strayed so far from the Scriptures today because they're in favor of a philosophy or they're in favor of, of, of some type of, uh, 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 of doctrine that is far from the Word of God. Uh, 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 this morning, says says, Brother David also said, now in Bible school, many of them have so many uh, 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 classes that it's years before they even get into anything Bible. Amen. We don't need all that other stuff. What we need is the Word. Word of God. Amen. Amen. The Word of God. I appreciated that this morning. The real revival Amen. is finding the Word of God Amen. and being submissive to it. But what does the Scripture say? Jacob, God said, Arise and go up to Bethel. Amen. That's the Word of God. Amen. This is the Word of God for us. Amen. When God's Word speaks it, Amen. The precept for revival is being submissive and, and the, the Scripture, amen, taking it and understanding it. So the first thing is the precept in revival, but the second place, the second thing is the place of revival. God said this to Jacob. He said, Jacob, arise and go up to, 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 to Bethel. It's being in the right place. Jacob had already been in the wrong place. I had read to you in Genesis 33, verse number 18. He already been in Shalem, the wrong place. 
The place that had an effect upon his daughter. Amen. The place that had an effect upon his sons. Amen. The place that had an effect upon him that wasn't a godly effect. It wasn't a holy effect. It was a sinful effect. And so God says this, Arise and go up to Bethel, being at the right place. Amen. Having a determination that I'm not living in the wrong places, but I'm living in the right places. I'm living in the Word of God. I'm living in the Spirit of God. I'm living in the right attitude. I'm living in love. I'm living in the grace of God. I'm living in the moving of God's Spirit. That is the place that I am living in. So there's a place to be. Amen. A right, right place. Because it is detrimental that we live in a holy place. And our conduct is holy. So that our souls can be healthy and live holy before God. So that we can inhabit revival. One thing that's important in our lives, and, and, and I, I, I think this, there's an old saying that says, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. How many of us realize that in the culture in which we live where there's fast food and there's all these things that, 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 are, that are, are created for it to taste good to our mouth, but it is not good for our bodies. So we eat these things and then we take a medicine, and I'm not... I, I, you know where I stand. I'm not even going down there. So we, 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 we take a medicine to fix that when, when the whole time, if we would have done what's right for our body, we wouldn't be in that situation. The church is in a situation where they're not in a place where God wants them to be. Holy living is a thing of the past. Holy living seems beyond the norms to folks because of the culture that we live in. But living in an unholy place will never produce revival. Amen. If we want revival, we've got to live in the right place where God wants us to live. A holy place. A place where God's Spirit can flow through us. So the place of revival. Amen. He said, rise and go up. So it's a return to the place. I don't know if you realize this or not, but Jacob had been to Bethel before. This isn't his first trip to Bethel. <laughs> if you look in the Word of God, and, and I wrote it down here in Genesis chapter number 28, you'll read about Jacob having a vision as he laid his heads upon, upon, upon some stones, and he realized that the presence of God was in that place. As he saw angels ascending and descending. Amen. He said, and this place shall be called Bethel. Amen. Because it's the house of God. Let me just say, now I'm not preaching to the choir tonight because you're here. Amen. But if we want to have a revival, there has to be a getting back to God's house. Yeah. Amen. There's a place where we also have to get back to where we once lived. Amen. Where God spoke to us. Where we know the presence of God is and the visitation of God is. Amen. There's a returning to this place. Jacob had been to Bethel before he had dedicated himself to God. And he needed to return again to this place. It's kind of like in Revelation chapter number uh, 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 chapter number. Two it is. Amen. The angel of the church of Ephesus speaks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. How thou cannot bear those which are evil. Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not. And has found them liars. And on down he, uh, he says. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. And repent and do thy first works. Sometimes we just need to get back to the altar. Amen. We need to get back to that place where God saved us. And God began to work and move in our life. Life can get us off kilter and off course. Amen. But we got to get back there so that we can have a revival. Amen. 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 We got to get back there. Amen. And, 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 and I love and I read this verse to you multiple times because I wanted you to recognize when God says arise and go up to Bethel. Amen. This is about a thousand feet from where he was, geographically speaking. Amen. It, 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 it was, it, it was a, a thousand feet higher than where he was. And so it symbolically tells us that revival is on higher ground. Amen. So many people want to live down here when God says, you want revival, you got to come up. 
Yeah. Amen. You got you to break away from the things of this world. Amen. Uh, Hebrews uh, uh, tells us, Hebrews uh, 12, 1, amen, that we need to lay aside every weight and every sin which, so, what the, which does so easily beset us. There's times in our lives where we look at our lives and see what's crept in unaware. God shone the spotlight of heaven. Is there sin in my life? Is there something that I need to get rid of? Our hearts are desperately wicked, the Bible says. We can't trust it. We, things can arise in there. So we got to rise above that. But there's also things that maybe aren't sin. But they simply take of our time. They take of our energy. Amen. They take of our resources that we don't have to get back to God. There's a lot of things that aren't sin. But it keeps us from prayer. Yeah. It keeps us from Bible reading. There's things that keep people from church. They're not sin. But it takes them away from the body of Christ and being together. Folks, I live long enough to know this. This life is but vapor. That pivotal time has vanished away. None of us have a guarantee. Amen. So the best investment of our lives is in the presence of God. Amen. In the place where God can work and move and give us a revival. Coming up higher. I'm slipping away from all that stuff. Sometimes we have to slip away from work. We have to slip away from responsibilities of home. Sometimes, as much as we love our family, and it's important, I love my family. I love to be with them. Amen. My, 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 my intimate family, but my extended family as well. But sometimes you just got to break away and say, i got to move up higher with God. Amen. Doesn't mean that we don't love them, we don't value them. Sometimes our hobbies, things that we really enjoy, makes us who we are and who God made us and we take and we love those things. But we break away and say, wait a second, I'm moving up higher. Because God's called me there. It's the call to revival. I gotta move on quickly. It is not only the precept of revival, the submission to revival, the submission to scripture, not only the second thing, the place of revival, returning to that place and that place that, 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 that is higher than any other place. But the third thing is the product of revival. And there's two different, two important things I, I want to mention here. The Bible says, and dwell there, the place of abode. Now some people think that revival is just something you visit every decade or every couple years or maybe once a year. But revival is a place of dwelling in the presence of God. Whether anybody else has revival or not, we live our life in revival. Where we're in the house of God, the presence of God, the power of God, the word of God, the submission to God. And so we're abiding there. Jacob had been living on a whole unholy ground and doing unholy deeds. And so he is moving himself out of there. Amen. And in Bethel, that place is the house of God where God dwells. The presence of God. It's time to say my dwelling place is in the presence of God. David talked about that. He said, I've lived in the palace. I've done lots of kingly things. I've traveled. I've seen lots of things. But one thing have I desired of the Lord. And that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I'd rather be in the presence of God than anywhere else because that's the real place of revival and renewing and submission and power is in the presence of God. And so then it is not only the, the boat and the, and, and the product, but it's the altar it is the product. He said, and there make an altar unto God. Do you know, when we're living in the presence of God, amen, there's something about that place that we have an altar Amen. Hebrews 7.25 says that we have an altar whereof, amen, uh, 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 that, that, that they that would serve their tabernacle, it's not the same. Amen. We have an altar in Jesus Christ, wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession for them. 
Thank God for the altar that's tangible in our church. But thank God for the altar of Jesus Christ that we live and we abide in. Amen. And that is our revival that we have an altar that every day we go to Jesus Christ knowing that He is our mediator. One mediator between God and man. And that is the man Christ Jesus. And we go to that altar and we abide there. Amen. It is a place of sacrifice on the altar. Amen. We give our lives as a living sacrifice. And then that sounds like it's difficult, amen, but when we really die, we really find that we really live. I, I'm not sure, I've not been following it real close, but, but, but I'm not sure what God is doing all in America. I'm not sure how you say his name. Is it Cayenne uh, West, Cain West? I'm not sure. I've seen some articles of him and the real shift and, and how he's, he's, he's really, he, and, and I, I listened to a little clip of him, amen, that was on the news where he said, at one, at one time, my spiritual man was asleep, amen, but he said, now he is awake. And, and, and this man, from what I can and see there's a transformation in who he is and what he wants to do. Amen. Because the spiritual man is alive. Can I tell you the product of the altar is we're no longer dead but we're alive. Hallelujah. So dwell there and build an altar there. That's your Bible, Sister Dot. We can live in it, Brother Doug. Brother Craig, every day of our life, Brother Justin, we can live and revive. Because we've come up, Sister Susan. The fourth thing and the final thing is the prodding for revival. You see, often revival accompanies the commands of God, and He wants us to obey them. And he does it in a twofold way. The dream in the prodding that God that appeared unto thee. He said, God that appeared unto thee. You see, Jacob had seen God already the first time that he was at Bethel. And so God begins to prod and he says, Wait a second. Do you know Jacob? The God that appeared unto you before is the same God that wants to meet you at Bethel again. The Spirit of God for revival begins to prod. It doesn't have to be that way. You've allowed things in your life that is keeping you from the momentum of what God wants to do in your life because He has already worked and moved before. But somewhere in the middle of it, you got distracted and you allowed yourself to dwell on a plane that wasn't good. Uh, you allowed things in your life, uh, your, 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 your offspring, amen, they're affected by the place that you live. And so God begins to prod and say, now wait a minute, that place where God, I visited you before, I want to take you there again. I want you to live there. But it's also a prodding where he says, When thou fleddest from the face of thy brother Esau. You see, Jacob was fleeing from Esau at that time. And so he begins to pry and he says, Wait a second. Remember, I took care of you before when you met with me. Let me get down deep in your heart and pry around again. That same protection that I gave you before is the same protection I want to give you again. That same working, I want to do it again. I wonder tonight if we really allow God to speak to us. Some of you have seen amazing things in your lives. You've been in good places where God has worked and moved. But I wonder if you allow the Spirit of God to speak and cry again and say, you're not there but I'm still there if you'll meet me. And the same God that provided for you way back then is the same God that wants to provide for you now. But you got to allow me. you got to get to the place where I can move and I can help you. Amen tonight, God wants to give us a restoring, a restoration, a revival. And maybe some of you haven't slipped away to the place where you're really far down off the mountain from Bethel. But maybe you already started to descend some. 
it's better to get back up on the mountain than to risk revival. Now's the time to take care of it. Where there is a dwelling place of God and where there is an altar and where God will reach your needs. So tonight, I want to invite you to just allow the Spirit of God to work in you. And then start giving your books to me. Amen, why don't you come? Amen, this evening, would you allow the Spirit of God to work and move in your heart? I feel like God has laid this upon my heart. Because God wants to do what He did for Jacob. He wants you to do all there. He wants you to see that His Word is powerful and take Him at His Word, not what someone else says. He wants you to be submissive because He has a place for you. As you make your way to that place, you have to get rid of the things that hold you back and say, I'm going to ascend. I'm going up higher. I'm getting rid of these things now, Lord. I'm going up higher. And when you get there, there might be some pride in as the Spirit of God gets in, He might say, remember, you've been here before and I've helped you. And I'm going to help you again. So tonight with that said, I wonder if we would gather in and say, God, revive me. Take me back to the house of God. If there's things that have kept you from being in the house and the presence of God, would you say I'm breaking away from it? And that I'm dwelling where you want me to be. Because God, there's where I see more than move. And I want nothing less from my life and the lives of others in my family. Because my revival affects others. Let's get it.